Okay, trigger warning for those of you easily offended. Do not watch this video. I'm talking to you, the person with your thumb hovering over the thumbs down button. You're not gonna dig this. For the rest of you, this is awesome. Channel 33 RPM. All right, so I asked you guys to post your controversial or unpopular music opinions, and man, did you guys come through. I'm gonna run through some of these and react to them. First of all, let's, uh, let's go to Facebook here. Mike, my buddy Mike, formerly from Vinyl Storage Solutions wrote, okay, this is unpopular or controversial music opinions. Mike wrote, digital versus analog, whatever. Almost all music since the late 1980s was recorded digitally. Okay, fair point. Abe, Dark Side of the Moon is a grossly overrated album, average at best. I like Dark Side. Uh, I like Wish You Were Here better. And maybe this is controversial. I like The Division Bell better than Dark Side of the Moon. There you go. I said it. Oh, here's one from Travis. Colored, swirled, neon vinyl is a gimmick that is one step below the pet rock. Oh man, I'm not a colored vinyl guy, but one step below the pet rock. Nick Fowler, listen to this. Outside of the first Van Halen album, Eddie Van Halen was a very overrated guitarist. Don't get me wrong, he was definitely one of the top 20 guitarists, but nowhere close to the top of the list that many put him. Oh man, you hit me where it hurts, Nick. Eddie is one of my favorites and I would suggest he was innovating. He was innovating up until, well, up until Balance even. There's there's some innovations going on on all the albums, I think. Of course, on the first album, he blew the doors down with his technique, but every album, he kind of introduced something new to, to the puzzle. He introduced something new to the formula, but that's just my thoughts, okay. Oh, <laughs> Jean-Paul. I'm happy that new records are so overpriced. Makes the hobby even more fun. Dude, you have to be kidding. You can't be serious. Makes the hobby more fun. All right, okay. Uh, Kevin, the only reason vinyl sounds better is because we listen to it through actual full-size speakers and headphones. That's an interesting take. I don't know, I listen to streaming and CDs all on my big system, but I, I like all the formats, so maybe my, I don't know. Uh, okay, what else here? Patrick, load and reload are better albums than kill them all. Really? Jim Morris was more of a drunk with a pen than he was a poet. I still love the doors though. Well, yeah, okay. Some of the greatest poets were drunks with pens though, weren't they? Jamie says the stones are better than the Beatles. I, I prefer the Stones to the Beatles. The Who are better than them both, and the Ramones are better than them all. I dig all those bands. I know the Beatles fans right now are going to be giving uh, Jamie some heck. Some of the Beatles fans, how can I say this nicely, are very protective of their band. And if you say anything negative, you better watch out. Hardcore Beatles fans, are worse than Toronto Maple Leaf fans. They are worse than uh, Jeep owners. I take that back, Jeep owners are fine. Um, they just gotta be careful around the, the hardcore Beatles fans. Sean, Walmart pressings are no different than other pressings. This one is, believe it or not, controversial. There are people who believe that Walmart pressings are inferior to other pressings. Um, I've never bought or owned or tried a Walmart record. Walmart here in Canada doesn't really sell vinyl. I've seen a couple records, but I've never actually tried a Walmart pressing, so I don't know. Uh, Damon, Unmasked is a fun Kiss album. I agree. I'm gonna go so far as to say Unmasked is one of my favorite Kiss albums. Revenge is the best Kiss album. Mm, I prefer the debut. Sammy Hagar is better than David Lee. Uh, I'm a David Lee Roth fan, but I don't mind the Van Hagar stuff. Randy Rhodes' guitar tone was annoying. It is really mid-rangey and nasally, isn't it? But Randy's still one of my favorite guitar players of all time. Marek, Marek, lyrics are not important. Man, to me, lyrics and music 
are super important. I love like all aspects of a song, but if a song has really, really ridiculous lyrics, unless I grew up with it and has some nostalgia for me, I just, I can't do it. Lyrics to me are important, but I get it. Okay, what else? Anything higher than CD quality is pointless for home listening. That comes from a mic. I've heard that before as well. Digitally sourced, this is Anthony. Digitally sourced is fine if mastered well. That's true, though it's all the, the hoopla and the controversy this past summer over the revelation that Mobile Fidelity for their premium pressings was using digital sources, but no one could tell. Everyone thought they sounded good until he found it was digitally sourced. So yeah, I agree with that. Digitally sourced is fine if mastered well. Matt Hayes, here are some of mine. Regardless of who sang, Millie Vanilli had some great music. Yeah, I'm, I wasn't a fan, but sure. I mean, despite the uh, the lip syncing controversies and, and whatever, they definitely made some catchy music that did well and sold a lot and, and got them on the music charts. Uh, here's one of his that uh, that jumped out at me. The modern obsession with colored vinyl is really amusing and is done mostly to get millennials to buy records. I don't know if it's only millennials. I know a lot of people who love colored vinyl. To me, I don't give a rat's ass, really, about colored vinyl. I like black vinyl. And yes, I know black is a colored vinyl, but that's, that's all I want for, for a variety of reasons. One of them being a black vinyl, you can e more easily see where the grooves are, where the spaces between the songs are, how clean or dirty your record is. I'm just a, a black vinyl guy. Another Beatles one, this one from Mark. I just can't with the Beatles and it's Van Hagar over Halen. Man, well, you must be excited over the fact that apparently the Sammy Hagar, um, the Sammy Hagar albums are being remastered and reissued on vinyl over the next year or two. So that's, that's good news. I, I like the Van Hagar stuff, but has it held up as well as the Van Halen stuff? Is it as popular as the David Lee Ross stuff? Like if you go on Spotify, it's all the, the Dave stuff that's up there. Maybe that's due to the fact that the Van Hagar stuff hasn't been remastered. I don't know. Darren, Brad Gillis is the best guitarist Ozzy ever had. I do like Brad's playing on the Speak of the Devil album. That was the album Ozzy did of all Black Sabbath covers. But is he the best? That's hard to say because we never really saw Brad write music with Ozzy. We never saw him fully come through with his personal style on the songs. And yeah, I'll be honest, Brad Gillis's like whammy bar work does annoy me a bit. Hester, Houses of the Holy and Physical Graffiti are Zeppelin's only good albums. Hmm, I do dig them, but I love the debut. I love everything up to Houses of the Holy and Physical Graffiti like Presence and In Through the Outdoor never really resonated with me, but everything before that I, I really dig. But uh, Houses of the Holy and Physical Fear is Upland's only good albums. Okay, all right. Here's one, Daniel. Tony Martin is the best singer Sabbath ever had. Daniel! Let me think about this for a second before, I, I, before I'm too shocked and outraged and giving myself a thumbs down. Um, technically, maybe technically he was the, the best vocalist. He is uh, definitely a good vocalist. I love the Headless Cross album, but how do you define best singer? Like technically, maybe it was Dio technically better than Tony? I don't know, that's a hard one. Personal opinions, right? It all comes down to personal opinions. Chris, Ozzy's last good album was No More Tears. I agree with that. One of my uh, unpopular opinions that Ozzy has not made a great album in like 30 years. He's made some okay stuff, right? Like all the albums after that have some okay tracks, but none of them, in my opinion, are stone cold classics. None of them are essential. None of them I can listen to from front to back and say I thoroughly enjoy them. That's just me. Ah, uh, here's one from Michael Allen. Metallica were never a thrash band. They played fast heavy metal in the 1980s, but it still was in thrash. I never thought about this before, but let's let's let this one sink in. Metallica was never a thrash band. Yeah, okay, unpopular opinion, but I think you got a point there, man. When I think of thrash from the 80s, 
I always think of anthrax. To me, anthrax is thrash, but okay. Metallica are never a thrash band. I'm gonna let that one sink in. Okay, Will, you two are utter dog shit. <laughs> I'm not a U2 guy. Pink Floyd didn't make one decent album after Roger Waters left. Oh man, I, I said earlier in this video, you know, I'm getting more comments coming in as I'm, as I'm doing this. I said earlier in this video, I'm not, I am a big fan of the Division Bell, so I do like the post Roger Waters stuff. Uh, here, here's one. British rap music is like drinking the contents of an unflushed toilet. Tell us how you really feel, Will. Tell us how you really feel. He says, these are my own, these are totally my own opinions and not intended to offend anyone. Call and CDs are still the best quality music reproduction you can still buy. I will give you the fact that there is no wow and flutter. I will give you the fact there is no or minimal surface noise. So CDs definitely do have a lot going for them. <laughs> Here's Eric. I listened to Nickelback. What do you say after that? On a Crossley suitcase. <laughs> and then Matt chimed in while wearing an I Like Vinyls t-shirt. Okay, this is funny. Let's just uh, switch over to the Channel 33 RPM YouTube community page. Okay, here we go. So I posted the exact same thing here. And again, this is all for fun, right? We're all entitled to our own opinions. Some of these are like hard for me to read, but I get it, totally cool. Kaiser wrote, static pops and crackles on old records don't mean that the record is ruined, it just adds character and life to the music. I know a lot of people like, tolerate, like, even like the snap, crackle, and pop of records. And I guess, yeah, sure it has some sort of nostalgia to it, but I am not a fan of the snap, crackle, and pop. And listen to vinyl, I want my copy to be as clean as possible. If I'm looking for a vintage copy, it's still gotta be as clean as possible. As clean as possible. I'm not a snap, crackle, and pop guy myself. Tom, prettiest for you is Alice Cooper's best album. Hmm, not my favorite. Um, uh, I, I find that one actually kind of hard to listen to. Alice Cooper, my favorite's mm, Billion Dollar Babies, but hey, any Alice is good Alice, right? Patriot, Patriot Tex. I have never seen the appeal of Fleetwood Mac and probably never will. All right, I like rumors. Um, I like rumors. What else? Grunge is why rock and roll music is on life support if not dead. That's interesting. Because people have different takes on this, right? Some people say grunge, in a sense, saved rock because it had just become this recycled thing of, of hair metal. It kept getting more, more and more over the top and the song quality was suffering and it sort of became, it sort of became, um, it sort of became a parody of itself in some ways. Some people say, some people claim that or argue that grunge saved rock and brought it back into the mainstream and on the radio and MTV and all that. But other people say grunge ruined rock. So good, good. It's a good debate to have. Jay Benz. Vinyl doesn't sound better than digital unless you have at least three to five K to spend, not including speakers, amp, preamp. Digital dollar for dollar gives you more. Mm, probably true, probably true. You can uh, you have to spend a lot more money on vinyl to get it to sound good in a sense or really good like to this elevate it to this level just because there's so much involved and so many moving things and so many parts so yeah okay I i'm not gonna weigh in on those figures i don't know my systems are not five thousand dollar systems but point taken here's an interesting one from restless outdoors the stylist is the most important part of your turntable the turntable just spins the record so half of all your so spend all of your money on a stylus. Oh, and Ecstasy is one of the most underrated bands in my lifetime. I agree with his comment about the stylus, that it is the most important part on your turntable. It's the part that comes in contact with your record. It's the part that comes in contact with the grooves. And I've heard different figures, like 70% to 80% of your sound is the result of your, your stylus, your needle. So yeah, definitely invest in a good needle because it will make all the difference. All right, comment from John. Yoko didn't break up the Beatles, John did. All right, I can't stand Greta Van Fleet. You know, Greta Van Fleet, I give him credit. At least they brought that, mm, 
vintage sound, vintage rock sound, Led Zeppelin-y sound back to the mainstream. But yeah, I'm not a huge fan. I wouldn't say I'm a fan at all, actually. Uh, he also said, I never understood why George Lynch is mentioned in the same breath as Eddie Van Halen and Randy Rhodes. Yeah, I, I, he certainly wasn't the innovator on the same level as those two. I mean, was he a guitar god? He certainly was in the 80s. Was Doc in the best venue for him? And the riffs and stuff were generally pretty simple, but he had some pretty shredding solos. But yeah, should he should he be on the same level as Eddie and Randy? Nah, John, you got a point there. James, Ringo Starr is a much better drummer than people give him credit for being. Yes, I mean, it's kind of like Phil Rudd from ACDC, right? Really simple drummers, but they got the groove, they're in the pocket, and those bands would not be who they are without those drummers, right? We saw it when Phil Rudd left ACDC, their sound changed. I mean, Phil and Ringo, for all intents and purposes, really are the heart of those bands. Magus, Metallica has made one great song, Saint Anger. You jest, my friend, you jest. I can't tell if some of these are serious. Will, Jimmy Page is better at producing than he is at playing guitar. I will give you that, Jimmy wrote some of the most classic riffs. He co-wrote some of the most classic songs, but he is a sloppy player, particularly live. Super sloppy. I, I guess that's part of his appeal, right? But yeah, he's a far better producer than a guitar player. That said, just I want to emphasize the fact that he has written some of the most iconic riffs of all time. Dan, get an amp with tone controls. They will help your music sound better. There, I said it. This is another one where true audiophiles really resent or dislike amplifiers with tone controls because it colors the sound and takes away from what the artists and the producers intended right i mean ultimately your equipment is coloring the sound no matter what but there is an element there are an element there is an element of music fans who are just no no to tone controls but i'm with dan i use my tone controls and uh, I, I see nothing wrong with it oh man excuse me i have had a cold all week so i'm kind of losing my voice here but i want to power through a few more of these comments uh, Ross Warren wrote, there's very little difference in sound quality between a $200 cable and a $2,000 one. I've never heard a $2,000 cable, but I imagine there are diminishing returns as you buy more and more expensive gear. He wrote, most all speakers made today cost you more than 300 bucks a pair. Sound good. There definitely are a lot of great speakers out there nowadays and you don't have to pay a ton of money for them. All right, what's this? Jambo. Rush musically are amazing, but Getty Lee's voice is unbearable for me. I have heard this from a lot of people, and I kind of, I've gotten used to Getty's voice over the years, but initially, I was not a Rush fan. It was mostly because of Getty Lee's voice. It certainly is an acquired taste. Yeah, musically, awesome, but yes, I will, I will concede. Buzz, I have loved the Foo Fighters since day one, but Dave needs to go away for a while and give us fans a break. Definitely there was some overexposure. I think since Taylor's death, though, he's kind of mm, backed away from the spotlight a little bit, and I think overall, tragic circumstances, right? But overall, stepping away from the spotlight, I think has helped the band. Okay, I got a bunch of overrated ones here. Beastie Boys are terrible. Jimi Hendrix is overrated. The Beatles are overrated. Nirvana is overrated. Fleetwood Mac and the Eagles are overrated. The Beatles are the most overrated band ever. And Freebird is the worst song ever created. And for the finishing one, for the final one, Chris, the monkeys are better than the Beatles. What? All right, 33ers, those are some of your controversial and unpopular music opinions. What else do you have? Throw it out there and leave it in the comments. Thank you for watching. Until next time, keep on spinning.